Thanks very much. I think the 75th anniversary of the NHS gives us a real opportunity to reflect. To reflect on the vision and delivery of an institution which has literally saved and transformed the lives of generations of people across Wales and across the United Kingdom. A service which will, under a Labour government, remain true to that principle set out by Bevan, free at the point of need, from cradle to grave. Be the gwasaneth ar weledigeth o aneir in Bevan o gynnau gofal iachid am ddim pan fo angen yn y gwyddor y bydd y Llywodraeth Lafer yn cadw drwy iddo yn y dyfodol. But I think this anniversary is a time for us to celebrate, to celebrate the immense achievements of the record numbers of people, 106,000 people who work for the NHS in Wales and who are achieving truly remarkable things. And this includes over 2 million contacts a month in a population of 3.1 million. And that doesn't count the 70,000 calls answered by the 111 service uh, that was made, for example, in April and again in May, which has now been successfully rolled out across the nation. Of course, now we also have the 111 Press 2 service, which has gone national as well. And I think it's worth noting and remarking on how the NHS has changed and adapted from those initial months in 1948, with, for example, a recognition of the need for mental health support now taking up around 11% of the NHS budget in Wales. That wasn't happening, I can tell you, in the Nairn Bevan's day. And today I think it is worth remarking on the incredible way that the system responded to the greatest threat the NHS has faced, a global pandemic. Many did perish, including, tragically, some of our frontline workers, but hundreds of thousands more were saved as a result of a vaccination programme which continues today and which is simply pocketed and taken for granted, an additional task which requires massive resources which wasn't necessary just three years ago. Babies survive today who would not have survived just a few short years ago. And the very fact we have an ageing population is a sign of the success of the NHS bequeathed to us by Bevan. But we all know that the system is under strain like never before. Demand for GP services remains consistently high with GP services accessed by people in Wales around 1.5 million times each month. We have an almost 10% increase in the number of patients attending emergency care facilities in May 2023 when compared to uh, just 12 months previously. And we know that our older population will mean that we'll have to adapt to more people living with dementia, cancer, coronary heart disease, vascular challenges, diabetes, poor mental health. And that for many people, they will be living with multiple examples of these challenges. We know also that there's a sh worldwide shortage of health workers. Health workers who are the beating hearts of the NHS, but who are exhausted and who are demoralized, and we need to do more to lift their spirits. And we can start by encouraging all those people who receive good treatment to simply say thank you and to show their appreciation and to show their respect. That's not done enough. We hear too much about the abuse of people working in our systems. And I think the constant negativity is sapping the morale of the system, despite the fact that the vast majority of the public cannot sing their praises highly enough. We need to supercharge delivery of our transformational health strategy, a healthier Wales. The vision that we should all be working towards is one where we strive to live in a country where everyone has longer and happier lives. They're able to remain active and independent in their own homes for as long as possible, delivering a whole system approach which will deliver high quality care and achieve more equal health outcomes for everyone in Wales. 
focusing not just on physical health, but on mental health with services designed around the individual. A service which sees people only going to hospital when it is genuinely essential and which sees a shift in resources from secondary care to the community. A switch to a wellness system which aims to support and anticipate health needs to prevent illness, as we've heard so much about today, and to reduce the impact of poor health. We know that every day, new exciting medicines and digital technologies are introducing new ways of saving lives, of extending the lifespans of our loved ones, or massively improving our quality of life. And we are going to embrace those new uh, facilities and those new medicines and those new technologies of the future. We also know that more of the same with the same amount of money is going to mean that the NHS in its current form will become unsustainable. And if we are genuinely interested in preserving a system for the next generation, we are going to have to ask difficult questions of ourselves and of the public in terms of how we are prepared to adapt to the continuing pressures. In Ingobod, be the parhai gadar in model, an efer prasenol, an amhossible, gadar governion, vidar aguasaneth and a devodol, ag ve vid angen, newidiad a radical, an afford in incunig guasaneth and a devodol. We also need to keep at the front of our mind the health inequalities that consistently and persistently continue across Wales. Why is it that people in Ely, in the community where I was brought up, tend to experience far poorer health than the people in Radar just up the road? Well, we've just heard why from the absolutely amazing Michael Marmot. We know that there are multiple factors which cause health inequalities. And that's not the NHS's sole responsibility to address these matters. Health inequalities exist within and between different regions and population groups in Wales, and it is a cross-government responsibility. And that's why this year we will be one of the first countries in the world to consult upon plans to legislate, not just uh, for the Welsh Government, to carry out health impact assessments, but for other organizations, including local authorities, to introduce health impact assessments before introducing new measures. But my comments today are going to be focused on the NHS directly, but also, crucially, the link between health and care and the demographic profile and long-term care needs of our nation. I know how important it is to have health services there for the time when you need it. Years ago, when I was 11 years old, I was involved in an airplane crash with the rest of my family. My mother's ribs were broken, and my youngest brother, who was four at the time, cracked his spine. And it was only thanks to the dedication of health workers in the Royal Infirmary in Cardiff, who cared for him for months on end, that he was able to completely recover and suffer no adverse effects. But our service is creaking. So how do we build sustainability into our model going forward? Well, the first question for me is, is the structure we have for making decisions and ensuring outcomes in relation to health correct? We've had the same system of governance and accountability in place since health boards were set up. In most other systems, delegation of responsibility is passed down and is used to empower people to make decisions who are closer to the actions. We have brilliant workers in the NHS, but sometimes it's clear to me that we stifle their creativity and innovation and drive. We need to release these skills to transform the system, whilst, of course, keeping a very tight rein on financial controls. The system in relation to governance and accountability, I believe, needs to be looked at. And that's why today I'm announcing that I will be commissioning a group independent of government to look at governance and accountability mechanisms 
of the NHS in Wales. Heddiw, dwi'n cyhoeddi y byddaf yn comisiynu grŵp annibynnol o'r llywodraeth i edrych ar fecanwaith atebolrwydd yn yr NHS yng Nghymru. The group will be made up of experts with experience of health and other systems in Wales and beyond, and will take evidence from people across health boards, trusts, and the political divide. The new governance and accountability group, once established, will be able to look objectively at how we can maximize and make the most of our system. And I expect this group to report by the end of the financial year. But before we go any further, I'd like to set out the scale of what we're facing. On current trajectories, the numbers of people diagnosed with cancer in Wales will rise from almost 20,000 diagnosed per year in 2017-19 to almost 25,000 by 2040. The number of stroke survivors are expected to increase by 50% during the next 20 years. We know that around 62% of adults in Wales are obese or overweight, and this has health consequences. And of course, one of those is expected to be an increase in the number of people who have diabetes type 2, which is, of course, largely preventable. We're going to see a huge increase in the number of people affected by sight and hearing loss as the population ages. So what's clear to me is that we need to reset the relationship with the public in terms of taking more responsibility for their own health and well-being. Mae'r rhaid i ni ail setio yn perthynas ni gyda'r cyhoedd o ran cymryd fwy o gyfrifoldeb dros ei iechyd ei hun. As a government and as a society, we need to create the environment in which those healthy lifestyles are accessible to all. That's what Michael Marmot was talking about, and that's what we understand in the Welsh Government. The NHS needs to be there to support, facilitate and encourage, but a great deal more work will have to be done by us all as individuals and as a society if we want a sustainable service that we can hand on to our children and our grandchildren. We'll all have to take far more seriously our responsibility to try and stay fit and healthy to eat well, to exercise, to avoid smoking and drinking too much. Those who are suffering from long-term illnesses will need to come further along the road with us to self-manage their conditions like diabetes and respiratory conditions through using new technologies like apps and websites. When you have limited resources, as the NHS has had since its establishment in 1948, you have to make choices. These choices are becoming increasingly difficult as the demand keeps growing. There's only one cake, and my responsibility as a minister is to determine how that is cut up. So if we spend more on diabetes, it means that people may have to wait longer to get that hip replacement. If we pay more to health workers, there may be a knock-on impact in terms of how many health workers we can employ. Today, we have more doctors, more nurses, generally more allied health care professionals than ever before in the history of the NHS in Wales. But we know that this isn't enough to meet the insatiable demand. And we know that we still have major challenges. There's nobody in Wales more aware of the need to clear the pandemic backlog than I am. And I was hugely disappointed that whilst significant progress has been made, we have failed to meet our first two targets. And I'll be putting pressure on health boards to make sure that they don't miss the revised targets, in particular of seeing 99% of two-year waits treated by the end of this financial year. I've required health boards to ensure that every person in Wales waiting for longer than three years for an outpatient appointment are given an appointment by September this year. I want to see more transparency in our systems for health boards to compare their performance against others and for patients to be able to understand what is going on in the system. I want to shine a light on variations in performance across the NHS, not just in relation to health boards, 
but also in terms of the different specialist areas across the NHS, working to get it right first time principles and a consistent approach to following best practice pathways of care. I want to stop rewarding failure and I want to consolidate and build incentives to drive success. Over the next few months, I'll be working with health boards and more importantly, clinicians to ensure we maximize the finances we have in the most efficient and effective way, ensuring that we focus on what is in the best interest for the patient. And these decisions will be needed to be made crucially uh, on the following principles. We will need to have health impact assessments, safety and optimal clinical outcomes, equity, sustainability, and I will, of course, expect these decisions to be based as far as possible on evidence. And that means that the public will need to adapt and respond to new configurations of healthcare delivery. And that may mean asking patients to travel further to receive the safest care available, doing only what is needed, no more, no less. We will need to listen to what matters to patients, but they will also need to hear about the limitations on our ability to deliver. We need to pay attention to the report written by the Bevan Commission that we've just heard about and cut out waste by not over-treating people, by cutting down on administrative complexity and the failures of care coordination. We need to reduce staff turnover, do more to ensure patients actually turn up for their appointments, cut down on giving unnecessary medicines and inappropriate treatment, reduce our building footprint and understand our responsibilities as an anchor institution to the wider economy and to meet those targets in relation to climate change. We'll keep going with our six goals for urgent and primary care program, which has uh, seen better performance against the four and our A&E targets in major emergency departments when compared England. I think for the seventh month in a row, we've had better uh, outcomes there. We've still got a long way to go, but definite improvement seen. We now have the 111 service across Wales, new urgent primary care centres, uh, new uh, same-day emergency care centres, you can go to pharmacies, all of these are alternatives to people going to emergency departments. In April last year, Wales became the first country to introduce a nationally directed community pharmacist prescribing service. One in six pharmacies in Wales are now providing this service with 47,000 consultations taking place last year in which 99% of patients reported that they would otherwise have visited their GP. We're changing the law so that we can make more use of our opticians for the increasing number of people who will need eye care in future, especially as we see that aging population. We've changed the contracts for our GPs to improve access and have taken steps to address the 8am bottleneck, ensuring Everyone is directed to the right care to meet their needs from the first time they call their GP practice. And we know that access to dentistry continues to be a challenge, but due to changes made to the dental contract last year, over 173,000 people who had historically struggled to get an appointment received treatment last year. Wales has considerably more hospital beds than England proportionately. Figures from the Nuffield Trust in 2020-21 demonstrated that the Welsh Health Service had around 270 general hospital beds, not including maternity, mental illness, nor learning disabilities, for each 100,000. And that compares to a, a 170 uh, hospital beds for every 100,000 in England. But to shift resources and staff into the community, as was set out in our vision, we may need to see a reduction in the number of beds. Wales has built six times the number of new hospitals proportionately in Wales, 14, since 2019, compared to England 
if you use the very strange definition that they've adopted there for what is a new hospital. They kept on banging on about their 40 new hospitals, which they're not on track to deliver whilst we have delivered here in Wales. We will continue with the direction of travel provided for us in our strategic plan, a healthier Wales. But the urgency of the task means that we need to go further and we need to go faster, further and faster, as we've started doing by shifting our resources from secondary care into primary care and the community, providing more wraparound care for our most vulnerable to stop them from needing to go to a hospital where they may get trapped for months on end. Further and faster when it comes to digital technology rollout, which has the potential to transform performance across Wales, which has already started with the nursing care record. We now have the NHS Wales app and its accompanying website, and it's transforming the way that patients engage with health and social care services in Wales. Through the app, patients who are registered with a GP who've turned it on can access their summary health record with a view of their health history or the repeat prescriptions, view past GP prescriptions and book view and can cancel appointments with practice staff. And we're asking GPs across Wales to turn on that facility in the next few months. Our goal is to enhance accessibility to health and social services for the people of Wales by providing convenient digital solutions. We aim to improve the app in many ways, including transparency regarding waiting lists, facilitate patient interaction with sec secondary care clinicians pre and post surgery, and introduce a hybrid mail solution for digitizing letters and communication. My colleague Lynn Neagle, even before she became Mental Health Minister, was instrumental in driving the transformation in the way we deal with mental health issues, with a fundamental understanding that early intervention and prevention and demedicalizing where necessary is crucial. The new 111 Press 2 service in its first few months has transformed the mental health landscape in Wales, and by May, this year, over 15,000 calls have been made to the service in the first few short weeks. Another key consideration for me is that we need to keep pace with technology and innovation beyond just digital matters. AI is about to transform all our lives. And whilst, of course, we need to be vigilant in terms of access to our data and privacy, it would be lunacy not to explore and potentially to embrace the incredible opportunities AI presents to transform the way we interact and we deliver NHS services. New genetic innovations, personalizing medicines to the individual, particularly in relation to cancer treatment, need to be embraced. But we can't do this alone. We need to forge new, long-term, mutually beneficial strategic partnerships with third sector organizations, charities, universities, and yes, with the private sector, if we want to deliver better outcomes for our population and for future generations. Workforce, workforce, workforce is key in any health care setting. However, brilliant the technology and digital application, nothing will replace the care and dedication that people want and expect from our care workers. We know that the workforce is tired and feels neglected and unheard, and that's why we're pleased that we've been able to put additional funding on the table to reward them for their efforts, in particular over the past few years. We work closely with Health Education Improvement Wales to invest more than a quarter of a billion pounds a year preparing the next generation of healthcare workers. But I must tell you that the circumstances around workforce have changed dramatically over the past few years. The World Health Organization has calculated that there will be a worldwide so shortage of 10 million health workers by 2030. That makes it a seller's market rather than a buyer's market. That's us in the NHS in Wales. And we, of course, must do more to retain our workforce, which is why 
we agreed to a series of measures with healthcare unions to improve their terms and conditions and flexibility, which we continue to discuss. But it's not just about the current workforce. When money's really tight, we can't afford to be training people paid for by Welsh taxpayers' money who will then trot off to some exotic, far distant land to work exclusively for the private sector or in another country. Dentistry is an area where the Welsh public have made it clear that they want to see improvements, but we can't continue to invest around a quarter of a million pounds in training a dentist who feels no responsibility to the taxpayer who funded that training and who then goes off to work exclusively for the private sector. I want to say something about the link between health and care. Julie Morgan, the Deputy Minister for Social Services, is utterly committed to working with local government to address the immense challenges that we're facing in relation to care. If people weren't aware of the link between health and care in the past, they most definitely should be now. After a win winter, which saw well over a thousand people medically optimized, but unable to leave an expensive hospital bed because of the fragility of the care sector. That's not the fault of local government. Despite Wales being one of the only parts of the UK offering the real living wage and us investing more than 40% more than England in social care, we are still struggling to attract workers to what is an incredibly rewarding position. We already have a series of national ambitions in terms of commissioning care. But we're going to need to shift our focus from a health and care service which traditionally targeted dealing with urgent and acute cases to one which deals with an elderly population living with long-term multiple complex conditions at the same time. At the moment, we're not geared up for the aging tsunami which we know is going to hit us, the waves of which we're already starting to soak us uh, with the first generation of baby boomers. We haven't yet worked out if the trajectories continue and if the public don't come with us on the public health journey, what we'll have to give or how we will pay for that increased demand. That conversation is a conversation we will need to have and we're starting today as we enter the 76th uh, year of the NHS. The NHS, which was inspired by Wales and has delivered for Wales. There are people walking around our communities today who would have died if it weren't for the NHS. Children whose quality of life has been transformed by NHS interventions. And yes, there are examples of where the NHS has fallen short of what should have been expected of it. And for that, in the Welsh Government, we apologise. But for 75 years, it has delivered successfully on the whole for the population. Just year, last year, over a million people in a population of three million turned up to the emergency departments. But if we want it to survive for another 75 years, we will need to have an honest conversation with the public about what we all need to do to do more for ourselves in relation to healthcare and to embark on a conversation about the reconfiguration of services which will improve healthcare outcomes. The Bevan Commission will have a fundamental role to play in that conversation so that future generations can celebrate as we are celebrating today. Diolch yn